you might need to rethink how you climb your tree by utilizing genealogy tax records. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of researching US tax records. In an upcoming video, I am going to show you how to research tax records, or at least one strategy that I've developed. Be sure to look for that video at the end of this video when it goes live so you can follow along. Now, every jurisdiction is different. Um, there are no hard and fast rules. I was recently listening to an educator that said, all tax records show this and all tax records show that. And as much as I love that educator, they're wrong. Every jurisdiction is different and every tax record that you're going to see is different. Let me explain. So in this example from the early Tennessee tax records, you're gonna see that it's just the list of names. And before you go, I'm not gonna look at that, there is value in putting your ancestor in a specific place and time, but it just goes to show that not all tax records tell you everything that another record does. So in this case, here's an example of a record that actually has more details. So this is tax records from Hamilton County, Ohio, which includes Cincinnati. And you can see it lists individuals and gives a lot more information. Now in this example, this is available on Ancestry. This is for Pennsylvania. And you can see that it's scripted by hand and it tells you the acreage here. If you're unsure of what these titles mean, these little um, column headings, then you have to go to the beginning of this collection to find out what the heading titles might be. So here's another collection also available from Ancestry. This is their Virginia tax records. And what do you notice that's dramatically different? Yeah, it's, it's not the original record. Now in genealogy, we often say go to the original record, but not every jurisdiction has records that have survived. I don't know all about the Virginia tax records, which is why you need to follow this other hint, and that is to look at the collection description that Ancestry provides for you. So you would go and you would click on Virginia tax records and read about the collection to see how, why was this record typed and collected in this way. So what are some information you might find. And I have to stress might because your collection, as I've just shown you, might not always have all of the information on these records. So some of the information you might find, well, the one that you're definitely going to find is the name. <laughs> all of the tax records tend to have the name of your person in a specific place and time. The next very helpful bit of information when you're looking at property taxes rather than head taxes. So head taxes are just a, a tax on you existing, but when they are doing land-based taxes or property taxes, it is really nice when a record gives you the identification of the property. So I will have a blog post that gives you more details than I can cover in this video. Be sure to check the description for this video to a link to the, our show notes and the added information that you'll want to explore. After the property information, then you may have the value of that property. This is really great, not only for understanding taxes, but as you track your ancestor for uh, tax records year by year by year, you can see, are they doing rags to riches, riches to rags, constantly affluent, constantly poor. You can see a lot about the economic conditions of your ancestors, which I will probably mention once or twice again. The next part of the record is going to be the assessments. And every jurisdiction has different tax laws and they're even not the same from year to year, which can be very frustrating when you're creating reports. But you have the assessment. Now in this particular one from Cincinnati, we have the state and canal taxes. Well, what does that tell you about Ohio? that this is during the canal building time period. So now you have social context in the history 
and the records of your ancestors on these documents. You next have the um, county and road taxes. That seems to never have changed, right? And then you have the school taxes. Now, if your ancestor doesn't pay school taxes, you're going to want to know, well, why is that? Is it because the school tax was only required of people who had children? If it is, then you have a clue from tax records that they have some children. You will have to look at the um, tax laws for that time period, and the show notes are going to give you information on how to track that down. So here's another record, and in this one, it also has the a, lif a different um, land designation, and in this case, they're talking about sections and lots. So this is very handy for finding your ancestors on a modern map where they might have lived on a modern map because a lot of jurisdictions, their sections and lots haven't changed, where in other locations it's named by <laughs> meets and bounds and other um, geographical, uh, physical descriptions. So when you have these lots and towns, you um, lots and sections and ranges, Utilize those are really handy in, the, in order to track your ancestors. Now, this one is from um, from Texas, and I went looking for Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, he's kind of a popular figure here in Texas. And on this record, I found some other really cool details besides just Stephen F. Austin. The first one was that this tax record collection not only said the owner who was paying taxes on this land, but down there in the middle, the original owner of the property, the original purchaser. So now you can trace people through land purchases. And if you happen to see people of the same surname, maybe, just maybe, they're relatives and that can open up some brick walls for you. And on this record, I really liked that it was telling me um, some of the agricultural information, what, how many horses, mules, cattle, sheep, um, jacks, and can anybody read that one? That one's hard for me, goats and hogs. And then finally, there was this other selection that I really liked here. I had heard when I went to Mason, Georgia, that um, some of the tax assessors were taxing pianos. They were taxing window panes. And the people got really creative in hiding their pianos. In fact, one of the ta um, creative tax evaders started making their pianos look like caskets. And I don't know why the tax collector didn't go, why do you have a casket in your foyer? But I digress. Because it was a casket that disguised the piano, they didn't get taxed on the piano. So it was fascinating when I went to these Texas records and you can see that you had instruments, tools, machineries, watches, jewelries, gold-headed chains, gold and silver, household and kitchen furniture. Oh my goodness. This is fantastic because again, what did our family do to evade the tax man so they didn't have to pay the taxes on these items? But if you do see them paying taxes on these items, you get the economic conditions of their household. So why do we want to research in tax records? Well, there are a lot of things that you can find using tax records. One, you can anchor your ancestor in a specific time and place. There are a lot of... Um, limitations when we do research the further back we go and tax records are one tool to put your ancestor in a specific time and place. Tax records could could be used to help identify the age of your ancestor. If your family lived in a specific location for a lengthy period of time, as a gentleman became of age, they will start appearing in tax records paying taxes. If they drop out of the tax records, they may have an exemption such as a minister or a veteran, or they might have passed away. And so that can help you identify the age of your ancestor. Tax records are very handy in overcoming record loss. If you don't have census records for a specific time and place, 
go ahead and see if there are tax records for that locality. You can also use it to overcome the Burns County districts because people did have to pay taxes and those records might have survived. The next thing you can do, which I personally like to see, is because I value writing family histories more than just climbing endlessly my family tree, and that is tracking an individual every year because they'll pay taxes. And when you start tracking your ancestor yearly, you're going to find a lot about what happened in their family. Were they stable? Did they buy land? Did they sell land? Did they migrate? Did they, um, you know, lots of things are happening. Lots of things are happening. And sometimes, sometimes you'll be able to see that they sold off their land prior to their death so they can evade inheritance taxes. So the details that you can find in these tax records from a specific year and then across multiple um, years, you can come to understand the economic situation that your ancestors faced. So I highly recommend that you begin diving into tax records. They are available on Find My Past, My Heritage, Ancestry, and Family Search. But a lot of the records have not been digitized, which means you might have to make a trip to a state archive or a genealogical library. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit this thumbs up button and the like button and watch our next video here. As soon as the follow-up video is ready, it'll be here. And until then, it'll be our most recent video.